Right, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we are going to be making my second ever 18650 based battery. This is a 4 cell 3000 10C, I suppose, because it can pull 30 amps up to 50 amp bursts. Um, this is the first one I ever did. A couple of mistakes with the balance lead, but other than that, it all works. It's charged up, it's excellent. And it's all ready for use in a plane which I haven't actually built yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. So in this video, here's one I made earlier. I'm basically going to show you how I go through making these. This isn't a how-to because, again, it's only my second battery I've made, so it could all go very wrong. But uh, let's start with the first process. Okay, dokey. So these are the cells I'm using. They are from Samsung. Is that SDI or SD1? These are 3,000 milliamp hours and can do 30 amp sustained to 50 amp bursts. I bought these on eBay in a pack of 10. I'll try and remember to link them down below. Um, the main, they're not my glasses, I'm only slightly blind. Um, the main thing that I would watch out for when you're buying 18650s is it might sometimes say in the heading of the listings, 30 amps, which is what I was looking for. Um, that means that um, it may or may not be able to do 30 amps because they have a constant and like a, a, an overdrive or, or, or burst um, amount. And some of the ones I was looking at that said 30 amp in the heading of the listing were actually only 15 amps sustained, which is far too low for a plane, uh, for example. So these, were, as I say, are 30 amp consistent with 50 amp bursts. Now, this all needs to be tested, I suppose, because they could have just been completely lying. Um, but uh, we'll go from there. As I say, if I, if I can remember, I will try and link them in the bottom. Now, again, so these can do 30 amps. Because I'm doing a 3000, the max this pack can take is 30 amps. If I'm doing 6000, it's 60. If I was doing 9000, it's 90, supposedly. Um, I will double check that, but that is my understanding. As I say, this is my personal going through and doing this and not an instruction. Um, if you want to know the benefits of 1860s and things like that, plenty of videos out on the internet. Now, the welder that I use is this one, the S787A+. Um, this was £95 delivered. And the reason I bought this is because by the time I'd bought like a DIY board and then like DIY needles or whatever you want to call the actual sort of welding end, um, and then a battery to run it, it was like 60 or 70 quid, and I thought, well, for 95, I can have a professional thing that doesn't run on batteries as well, and a proper transformer, because um, transformers are about the same price as a battery or two. Um, so I decided to get this. And one of the good things about that is not only is it a professional tool, so you know it'll work, although, again, Chinese technology, I suppose, but it came with this little tray. Now, this tray, the batteries fit in perfectly. Now, I've seen some people have, like, a, a thing that works today, Daily can uh, like sort of stand them up in um, and I can see why that'll be a benefit but I'll show you what I decided to do instead um, but you know you can you can make a, a pack up using this tool um, for some reason when I said pack up I immediately started thinking of sandwiches uh, anyway so if you're making so because I'm making a four cell um, 3000 basically Every cell is going to be the way around. In terms of the end, will sort of look like that. So that's positive, and those are negatives. Because this is kind of like a normal AA battery, just with the sort of head pushed in a bit. That's what she said. Um, so this is how it's going to be, but because I want it in like a cube shape, uh, I'm going to you know, basically do that almost um now the way i'm going to do this is i'm going to lay them up in here now the reason i've explained that is let's say for example we wanted to make a twelve thousand. what you would do if you want to make a 12 uh 12, what you would do to begin with is you would get four of them you know three times four three thousand times four and we'd weld these all up into four lots of parallels and then you would basically lay these four one that way one that way one that way one that way and weld across them all again. Um, now, because I am just using a, a 4S1P as opposed to what well, that would be, which would be 4S4P for 4 series 4 parallel, again, this is not a how to. Um, we are basically going to have them 
like this, as I said before. So what this tray can do is you can basically line them up and glue them. Now, the reason why I'm gluing them and what I'm using as a glue is impact by Evo stick. Basically, any of the sort of rubbery contact adhesive, so you who pour, for example, would do. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is so that it's not just hanging on the welds, they are actually stuck together themselves. Um, now, if, again, this is a lighter way of doing it. If you're putting this in like a skateboard or something like that, that weight really isn't a problem. You can have like this basically attached all the time, more or less. You can get ones that, as I say, go on either, go on the ends. Um, and then you don't need to glue it. But I'm going to glue them for a little bit of extra strength. Um, now, so I've put a little bit of Vaseline on the join here. The first time I did this on that first battery I showed you, I didn't use it. And to be fair, it wasn't really a problem. Um, but I thought it, it was stuck a little bit. So let's improve things. Just put a bit of Vaseline in. So now what we need to do is we need to put in our batteries into the tray. And as you can hopefully see on the end, you've got a positive and a negative. And a positive and a negative. And all we're going to do is run some glue down that slot. So, uh, bear me a moment, I'll do that. Okay, so here's a little bit of a before and after for you. We've got the glue in there, and this is one without glue. I'm going to do in a moment again. Positive and negative. Um, so I'm going to put some glue in here. Wait an hour or two, because it just needs to sort of go off a bit. It doesn't need to be fully hard. And then I'm going to flip them over and put some more glue on the other sides. Okay, so earlier on today I flipped these over and gave them a second dab of glue. So we now have glue on both sides. And now what we do, nice and simply, is we take them 90 degrees, stack them back together, sort of have a look at them down the edge and get them lined up. And that's right, you guessed it, put more glue here. And then once that's dried, flip it over, more glue on the other side. And then that's all of the gluing done. Right, so back a few days later with the battery build. Apologies for the background noise of a 3D printer. Um, but yes, I have the batteries here. Uh, so if you didn't see, I glue down one end, glue sort of down the inside, and then glue them together. Again, with glue on the outside of both sides. Um, now, I suddenly realised that there wasn't actually any glue here. Um, you know what? I'm going to pretend I didn't see that, but if I was doing this properly, I'd put some glue in there, but I've decided to do the welding now. Another thing, of course, is when I actually first glue these together, I accidentally glued it so I had female, female, male, male. Wrong. Has to be different all the way around. Diagonally the same, but different in a, in a circle. So, um, we're going to move on to doing the welding now. Now, this is my machine. As I say, it's a 787A Plus from Sunco. It's about £95 delivered. These are your two settings. I don't exactly know which does which, but one is like 4 to 60, 80, and one is like 2, 4, 6, 8, I think. Now, when it comes out of the box, it's 4 to 20. That wasn't quite enough, so I it to 60, to, uh, sorry, 40 and 2, I to 60 and 2. Basically, I would recommend going from the lowest and moving up. So I did the 40, it didn't quite weld all the way through. You kind of just stuck it to the cell, not solidly. Up one, um, sticks it really solidly to the battery. If I go to 80, I have the chance of blowing all the way through the nickel and touching the battery, which you don't want to do. So, uh, I just need to go and get the actual nickel strip, and we can begin. Okay, so this is the strip that I'm using. It's full nickel. It's not any of your stuff with nickel plating, like what came with the machine. This is full proper nickel. It's very thin. And these are actually going to be our uh, main battery tabs, so the plus and the uh, minus. Or positive or negative what i do is i just sort of fold them 90 degrees which i'm doing through the lens that one went on the floor uh, but yeah and then just tack that on and then we can bend that over on the original one i actually sort of sold it on the inside but that's kind of a mistake i'm going to bend it over sold it on the outside the reason we do this is so that you don't put loads of heat into the cells and just the tap okay so this is what the finished article looks like so i i always do two left and right and two up and down um so that's four total things on the machine eight total little dots um, so now that's done what I basically do is take a connection so I'm gonna take the positive follow it to the negative on the back and get to a positive so we're gonna go that way um, now it's hard to do with one hand um, but these are the strips that I use we're just gonna lay that across there 
and bolt it to one side. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. I'm going to do one side and then do a for you. Okay, so just put a single go on that one just to hold it in place. It is a bit of a bar steward to do and it does smell a lot like burning hair. So what we're going to do, we're going to come down to the machine. And that's going to cause a slight problem for us at light. Um, can I... Oh, that's a mistake. Maybe that's a good one. So you can see all these copper things down here. I reckon just make sure the copper is in frame. I missed the thing. I did. Yeah, but yeah, basically you push up on this arm and it automatically sets it off. Um, it's very hard for me to do with one hand. Uh, on the camera and one hammer on this but this is basically what you do and as you can see we now have a mistake um, so i'm gonna do that again and then do two to the side i probably recommend doing it actually a little bit like someone here someone here which is what i'm going to do but that yeah that's basically how it works yeah so just keep going and welding stuff so if we have a look now from the positive it goes in here around into this cell whoa into that cell into that cell whoa around again whoa into that cell and then out to our negative i'm not that happy with this piece of um nickel I had to basically rescue it because I popped up on another one, it's a bit short, but um, it should be fine in theory. Um, I'm actually going to leave it for tonight now because it's, it's relatively late at night, it's 10 o'clock. I'm just going to, while I'm leaving it overnight, I'm just going to run another bead of glue down there uh, and then we're on to actually the soldering up of all the wires and the bounce lead and stuff. Fun times. Also, if you are going to leave these, and you can, store them in a LiPo safe bag just in case they do implode on you, they shouldn't do, but uh, just in case safety and stuff like that okay so another day another solder ring job i suppose so what we've what i'm going to do first of all is i'm going to make a little pigtail up with our x260 connector we got this i think from banggood i can't exactly remember um but it has like lots of different adapters and it holds like x260s and stuff so i'm going to solder that up here shrink that and then we're moving on to the balance lead so this is just a 4s five wires that means bounce lead and I'm basically going to cut this end off and use this other lead to make our bounce lead. Um, I'm just going to cut them all level to begin with and then we'll do the custom sizes and things but uh, let's get this pigtail here made up first. Okay so we are now on to soldering our balance lead on there because we've got a set length and um, we need to know where this is going to be. Now in terms of wiring this up it's actually super simple. Basically Positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative, and then the next link has an X wire. So we'd have the red go onto this positive here with a blob on. We'd then have this wire next to the red go onto the next tab, and the wire next to that go onto that tab, and the wire next to that go onto that tab, and then you're on the last negative wire. So now because we've got to work out the length of this balance lead, what I need to do is find positive, then find the uh, cell after it or find the um, wire after it so that's going to be this one this white one here and i'm going to solder it onto the first tab or, or the second sort of soldering point there and obviously that's going to do, tell us our length and then we can cut all these other leads to the correct length for there what i'm actually going to do because i'm going to have it so the leads are actually coming out that way um i'm actually going to have the wires run down that side of the battery um, so yeah, we'll just get that done now, I guess. Okay, so all I have done is uh, traced that route back, put a blob on it so I know which is which. I'm just saying I'm going to run the wires down here and put the first wire after the red wire onto that solder patch. Okay, and there we are. Our first balance lead is soldered on. Nice big patch of solder. Uh, and our battery, our balance lead is going to come out that way. So basically, I've got to route this red cable to our red tab cut to the right length and solder it on. Now I know what length it needs to be. Okay, so that's all the soldering done. It really is just a case of following all the wires around. I've done the two down there. I've done the one across those two there. One to each side, possibly not the neatest job, but it'll work. Uh, and this is basically how it's going to look. Now in terms of wrapping these up, I put electrical tape over each sort of connections. So sheet that way, a sheet that way, and some across these. And then I put some actual heat shrink over the top of everything. So I'll show you once it's done. Okay, and that is it. It has been taped. It has been heat shrunk. It's not the best heat shrink, but it, it works. 
um, leads are all nice up there. Basically, we just need to run a charge on it, and I'm going to watch it for a bit. Make sure, well, you should watch for the whole thing. Don't do what I do, and only watch it for a bit. Um, but it is, will be in a lipo safe bag, of course. Um, like legitimately, because I built it my own, I'm going to put it in a lipo bag um, and charge it and see what happens. This is a 3004S 10C. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button. Hopefully, you learned something, even if this isn't a tutorial. Uh, but maybe it might. Uh, well, that's strange. Uh, it might um, make you think that even if an idiot like me can do this, you might be able to do it. So uh, feel free to give it a try. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoy it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.